Welcome and good morning, and uh, thank God for another opportunity that we can continue our study, our devotional in the book of Job, and we are nearing to the end. We are now in chapter 39, and let me read to us for this devotional this morning on verse 13 to 18. Let me read to us in the English Standard Version. The wings of the ostrich wave proudly. But are they the pinions and plumage of love? For she lifts her eggs to the earth and lets them be warmed or warmed on the ground, forgetting that a foot may crush them and that the wild beast may trample them. She deals cruelly with her young, as if they were not hers. Though her labor be in vain, yet she has no fear, because God has made her forget wisdom and given her no share in understanding. When she rouses herself to flee, to flee she laughs at the horse and his rider. Now, this is only one of the animals that are mentioned here in chapter 39. Uh, we are continuing on the discourse or the answer of God through the whirlwind to Job here in chapter 38, 39, down to verse, chapter 41. And this chapter talks about the amazing animals who are showing or that are showing the existence of God and the wisdom and the power of God and amazing animals showing God. As I said in chapter 38, God used numerous features of inanimate creations to question and refute Job's light to his wisdom and power. Now, there are two kinds of creation. There are two categories. One is inanimate. They have no life like the earth, the wind, and many other such things. But he created also the animate world, the plants, the trees, and especially the animals. So these questions about inanimate creation include his knowledge to the creation of the earth, oceans, dawn, sun, expanse of the earth, light and darkness, snow, hail, frost, thunderbolts, and so on and so forth. So Job cannot answer all these questions. They are unanswerable. Here in chapter 39, he posed rhetorical questions to Job about the dynamics of the animal kingdom, what we can observe in the animal kingdom. These questions include chapter 38, verse 39 to 41. Do you feed lions and their cubs or their ravens and their young? In chapter 39, verse 1 to 4, do you know when mountain goats and deer are born? In verse 5 to 8, did you lose the wild donkey and care for each one? In verse 9 to 12, do you control the wild donkey or does he obey you? And in verse 13 to 18, did you give the ostrich low intelligence? And in verse 26 to 30, or 19 to 25, did you give the war horse abilities for war? And the last here is, did you give the hawk and the eagle incredible eyesight in verse 26 to 30? So God asked these questions in sequence. And every question Job cannot answer. It's too deep for him to grapple all this things happening, the dynamics in the animal world. Job was so-called tongue-tied here. Previously, as we read in the book, in this book, he accused God of being silent. God, where are you? Why are you not talking? Now, he is the one in silence. He is now, now the one who cannot talk or won't talk because he cannot answer all these questions. It is impossible for Job or anybody to know and explain all this, is it not? Animal scientists can explain why, for example, the ox or the cattle can eat grass and then 
He can produce milk. He can explain that. The process of producing milk from the grass that is eaten by the cattle and then it will become milk. But we ask this question, could he invent a machine that could transform a grass into a milk without the cattle? So there is such thing as mystery and deep things happening in the animal world that we cannot really grapple in. God made them uniquely. What makes these animals stick with their unique features, skills, behavior, and survival instincts are controlled and designed by God. He controlled all these beautiful, amazing animals. Furthermore, here in this chapter, as described by God here, their distinct descriptions demonstrate God's goodness to its animals, saying to it that these animals survive. For example, the portion of the scriptures that we have read, the ostrich. The ostrich seems to neglect her eggs and has no concern for her young because when there is a predator, the mother ostrich will just flee away because she's frightened and she runs away and leaves them. But this is the design of God. Another example are the hawks and the eagles. They made their nest in the higher places than other birds. So the question is, are they disadvantaged in looking for food? No. Why? Because God gave them remarkable eyesight, which enabled them to see the tiniest objects from a great distance. And we can think of many other animals, even if we observe, if we go to the zoo, you can just wonder why the giraffe has a long neck and the hippopotamus has a big body. Why we can, we can be marveled by all these observations in the animal world? Because God created them uniquely. And the most important thing is that he cared for them. God cares for the animals. How much more to us, his very own children? Did not Jesus say in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, when he taught the crowd, look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more, more value than they? Jesus even explained here that the glory of the grass or these lilies are better, or they are they, they, they are more beautiful than Solomon's kingdom, Solomon's um, grand palace, and all the, the beautiful things that Solomon did. They are more glorious than Solomon. In other words, when we look into the world and the creation around us, let us not forget that there is a God. God created all these beautiful things. Maybe today, you you need to walk slowly and watch the things around you, the, the, the trees, the birds, the, the butterflies and dragonflies, and, and look at them and be marveled and be reminded that God is the creator of all this. If God feed all these insignificant creatures, if God clothe the lilies of the field and these flowers that they are insignificant in comparison to us. How much more our Heavenly Father? This was what Job missed to see. He was overwhelmed with so much pain and sorrow so that he forgets or he forgot that God is behind all these inexplainable and unanswerable questions that we can ask about God's wonderful creation, especially the animal world. So look around. Take notice of what God is doing and what God has done through his creation. And we will be directed to him and worship him. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Adina, let us pray. Father, thank you so much that 
the creation of the world, even the animal kingdom, demonstrates your wisdom and your power. And thank you that these accounts of certain characteristics of animals, the dynamics of how they live and grow, and how you are protected each one of them. They are written here in chapter 39 in order for us to recognize that you are a wise, powerful, sovereign God. And even as we reflect, Lord, today in the world around us, there's, there's a lot to learn if we see the mountains, the skies, even the little creatures around us the beautiful things that you have created in this world. Lord, help us to really see you in all this so that we'll be able to worship you even today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.